Hi there, welcome to my channel. If you're not familiar, I'm Von Bonnie from Von Boo and I love to refurbish furniture. This time I have this fabulous solid timber vintage desk and we're going to do a bit of decoupaging. It has a gorgeous timber top so I'm sanding off the old varnish and stain and this is when I like to contemplate the design. To protect the timber as I work on the rest of the piece, I'm rubbing in some Annie Sloan Dark Wax. I've decided to use one of Mint by Michelle's new release decoupage papers called Pale Blossom. This is the A1 size and I have grand plans to wrap it right around the side. Before we can do any decoupaging, we do need to add a primer. It's very dark timber, so I'm applying a new mint product called Mint Grip. This not only allows the paint to grip well to the varnished surface, but it provides a light background for behind the paper. So now she's all ready for the decoupage. I'll explain why I'm doing this very soon. This little tool is called a felt applicator and it's an absolute must for this decoupage. And we also are going to need to mist the paper to get it to stretch around all these bumpy bits. Before we do any pasting, we really have to get the placement right. A lot of the time these lovely vintage cabinets are not square so you just have to make sure that your paper is not going to go skewish. Skewish, I don't even know if that's a word but you know off skew off center. So first now we're putting on a small amount of top coat just to sort of lock it in place. I'm using top coat to paste. You can use any product you want to paste. I prefer to use top coat because it is just the perfect consistency that doesn't wet the paper too much. It doesn't dry too quickly. It allows me to manipulate the paper a little bit. And as you can see, I'm using a sheet of plastic to protect the paper because I do use my fingers a lot. This bit of plastic is actually part of the bag that the paper came out of. Um, I find it's a little bit tougher than cling wrap. And in, in conjunction sorry, with the felt applicator um, and the plastic and with my fingers pressing into all the edges in the corner after I've missed it to create a bit of elasticity, this is the perfect way to manipulate the paper over the drawers here. This is a bit of a slow process and you really need to take your time. As you can see, this video is slightly sped up a bit because the whole putting on process took close to an hour. But when you take your time, with these tools, you can get the flat surfaces wrinkle and bubble free at least, knowing that you're probably going to have to go back and glue some edges down. And also, do not fret if you create tears. I did have some tears and it's probably because I'm um, manipulating the paper a lot and I am misting quite a bit. I'm misting to um, relax the paper. It allows it to stretch around these shapes, but it does 
to a certain extent weaken it slightly. Even though these people papers are so tough, there is, I did end up with a few tears, but don't panic, it's all fixable with paint. So just sit back now with your beverage of choice and watch me apply it over these drawers. Oh, that's right, I was going to explain why I have the desk on its side. Well, these papers work really well, or they apply really well when you apply them in portrait mode, which means like going the lengthways of the paper down your piece. Also, if I were to do this upright, I would have had someone having to hold the end of the paper, which I didn't have. Also, if I tried to have the desk upright and tried to put the paper going down, I would have had all this excess flapping around the side. So I found this actually the most easy way to apply the paper. I hope that makes sense. So now I'm thinking, this is working out even better than I expected. I've only got a few tears at this stage and um, I'm nearly over the hardest part. So now I'm doing a bit of a happy dance inside. As the front is on, I'm just doing a little bit of trimming. I wouldn't normally um, cut the paper here. I would usually just wrap it straight around the corner, but I was going off at an angle. And this can happen for a couple of reasons. You know, sometimes these old vintage pieces aren't square. And with all the stretching I did around the drawers, I may have offset the paper. So now I'm just going to rejoin it, but reposition it as well. And if there is any parts of the design that look a little bit out of place, I can always fix that up with paint as well.
So I'm on the home run now. This is the easy part. The hard yakka is done. I've manipulated the paper around the drawer fronts. We've gone around the corner. I'm now just pushing out wrinkles and air bubbles using the felt applicator and the plastic tool to keep protecting the paper. Notice I'm still only pasting a couple of inches at a time. I still don't like to work too much of the paper at once. And as you see, it just goes on nice and wrinkle free. Here I'm just sanding off the excess around the bottom. And making sure all those bottom edges are glued down properly. At this stage I'm just high-fiving myself because the paper has gone on so well. There are some tears as you can see, a couple of tears, but I'm going to fix this up with paint and you will never notice. Now it's all dry, I'm using a sharp blade to slice around the drawers so we can pull the drawers out and start fixing up all the edges. I'm just going around all the edges to make sure that they're pasted down and I'll do this all on, around the inside here and around all the drawers as well. So now I'm uh, sanding off the excess paper and getting rid of some of the top coat that has leaked down the sides of the drawers from the initial um, pasting.
At this stage, before I do any painting, I like to seal the paper. And I like to use a spray varnish because it is not water-based. It will not reactivate the paper. Sorry you can't see it so well, but this is butter icing, a mint bombshell mineral paint, and it is a really perfect match for the paper color. This is gonna be my main base color for the whole piece. Just putting in the knob holes now so I can pull the drawers in and out during the painting process. This tiny art brush is all I need for all the touch ups, and I'm starting with Mint's Time and Space Black um, on the stems of the flowers. Maybe I should have um, zoomed in a little closer, but honestly, you really don't need a to be a fine artist to do all these touch-ups. I'm using a combination of a variety of mint mineral paint, mainly time and space black, stoneware clay, the Sound of Rain, which is a light grey, and Butter Icing, which is that lovely creamy colour we've got on the base. And another reason why I like to spray with a varnish before I paint is so if I'm or when I'm doing all these touch-ups, I can actually use a cloth on my fingers as you can see to remove some of the paint um, so it's not soaking into the paper. It's sitting on top of the varnish so it's easy to remove if it's not right. But don't worry, we're going to seal again when it's all finished. I'm not apologizing for dragging this out a bit, but I did want you to appreciate how much effort I do put into um, making sure that the finished product is perfect.
Then the base gets a few coats of butter icing and I do end up wrapping some of that design there on the corner around. But sorry, I haven't shown you that in this. Now I'm using a bit of dark brown to add a bit of shadowing and dimension to the bottom edges. And I'm using mint stoneware clay to add some dimension and detail around the top edges and around all the draw corners. Notice how I'm stippling on some paint, I'm giving it a bit of a mist and I'm dabbing some of the paint off. It just means I can control it a bit better like this. I can add more if I need to. I can remove some of the paint if it's too much just to achieve the right amount of shadowing that I'd like. You could really go as grungy as you want, as aged as you want, but for this particular piece, I wanted her to just have a little bit more dimension around the drawers and in the crevices. And like I mentioned before, I give the whole piece another spray with the, the varnish when all my painting is complete. The only thing to do now is to add time and space black to all the legs and then some knobs and she'll be done. I've finished the top off with another coat of Annie Sloan Dark Wax and some liquid beeswax. And I have to say, she is looking fabulous. I am so thrilled with the results. I am so pleased how I've wrapped this Mint by Michelle decoupage paper around the side of this vintage desk. The mint mineral paints really work well to repair all the tears, you would never know they were there. I really hope I've inspired you to give Mint by Michelle decoupage papers a go. If you'd like to see more of my work you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching.